What are some of the things that Dr. Heaps allegedly did to other women? We allege that there was conduct that was not medically necessary, that in fact it was conduct that was designed to sexually stimulate women, which we know is never part of a gynecological exam and should never be part of it. Um, and that's something that UCLA has acknowledged in the Title IX report, which was recently released with regard to the misconduct alleged by one of our clients, and UCLA acknowledged that that type of behavior, sexually stimulating conduct, is, of course, not acceptable. And Ellen, that's what numerous of these women allege. Ellen and Stephanie, were there chaperones ever in the rooms for these exams? In the past, before the incident, there were. But there came a time where there was no longer chaperones in the room. Which shocked me as well. You look shocked. I was shocked I, I as well. Sh <laughs> I'm I just thinking too. that just, you know, male OBGYN, I thought that was now at least well, the any, standard of any care. Any OBGYN, I would yeah. think. Nita, I mean, this is yeah. so unusual. Yeah, it, it is my preference personally, at, even as a female, to have a chaperone in the room. And honestly, in some clinics where it's very busy, I do have... You know, I do know some of my female colleagues may ask a patient if they feel comfortable proceeding without a chaperone, but you should always leave that up to the patient. But I don't even ask the patient. I just think it's good form to have yep. a chaperone in the room. But a male gynecologist? Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, that's, that's I mean, any I'm male, kind of any male physician. I'm, as a plastic surgeon, I would never, I would never go in and see a woman and examine a woman without. I, I mean, I don't even uh, do full body skin checks in my office without a medical assistant present. Just, it, it just seems that now that's so much the standard of care. When there were chaperones present, there weren't always. I always, I, I feel that I was misinformed. They appeared to be more as assistants. They handed him tools. They would input things on the computer. They'd have their back to. He and I, during the exam, I didn't quite understand their role as a chaperone. I had thought they were just his assistant, and that's why sometimes they were there and sometimes they were not. If he didn't need somebody in the room, he didn't have them. That, that's actually one of the systemic changes that we're hopeful will come out of all this, is that we'll see independent chaperones, people who aren't beholden to the doctor for raises and reviews, and it, it really was an unfortunate culture that existed or appears to ex have existed at, at UCLA. The doctors. 12 years in! The prognosis you prayed for. For the first time in public, I want to see if she can take a few steps. This is so scary. The treatment you needed. You look fabulous. It's the daytime talk show that's been your cure for over a decade. That is literally taking the lives from their community. I can't believe that this is happening. With the issues affecting your health right now. It is not housing, it is not economic inequality, it is a health crisis. I lied to you, and I lied to you. I have a truth that I'm going to reveal. The Doctors, on call for season 12.